All right, yay-alabama.com is where you find Aaron Suttles' work now, yay-alabama.com. Um, interviews with Tommy Reese, Kevin Still, behind the scenes, all of that stuff. You can subscribe right there, yay-alabama.com. You can also see Aaron on Bama and Bourbon starting next week. You know it's football season when Bama and Bourbon is back. He is with us now. What is up, Aaron Suttles? How are you today? Hey, fellas. How are you? Doing awesome. Um, so, obviously, you got a lot of people that are in these scrimmages, so a lot of word leaks out. Um, it, to what degree of confidence do you feel like you could identify who the starting quarterback would be week one? Starting as in who takes the first snap of the first series, I feel pretty good. Um, I'd be surprised if it's not Jalen Milrow. Um, I don't think there's any separation among the quarterbacks, or at least the the quarterbacks that we've heard the most of through through fall practice, I just I don't you know. Nick Saban said last week, I believe, was when talking about the quarterback situation was placed so well that you don't leave us a choice, right? That that hasn't happened yet, and, and so I don't. I think there's very little separation. I think there will be technically a starter against Middle Tennessee State, but I don't know that we'll know who the real starter of this football team is maybe a few until a few weeks in. Yeah, I was going to ask you, and I mean, I, I'm kind of with you. I think Milrow takes the first snaps. I said that earlier in the show, but I kind of get a feeling that somebody else might take the first snaps against Texas. Could you see that scenario? Yeah, I mean, ab absolutely. And why not use Middle Tennessee State? Listen, with all due respect to, to Middle Tennessee State, Nick Saban's not listening. We, we can talk this way. It doesn't matter who plays quarterback. And so why not play as many as you can? Make Texas prepare and use as much time of, of their practice week the next week, uh, not knowing which quarterback they're going to get. So, um, yeah, I, I tend to think that, you know, listen, I, I just – the quarterback situation is what it is. It's not ideal after Alabama having had several seasons of elite quarterback play. Um, this is not going to be that type of team where the quarterback's going to lead this offense in terms of its identity. We've, we've talked about that since the spring. That, that hasn't changed a bit. Um, they just need somebody who's going to keep them in good plays, stop turning the football over, um, don't take sacks, and, and really play to this, strength, uh, the, this team's strength, rather. Um, one of those strengths you've told me all summer long is the offensive line. A little more shuffling for this scrimmage, and you've told me Proctor would eventually find his way uh, into contributing. Has he has he found his place on that offensive line now? Yeah, I mean, based on, on the reps that we all heard about and, and some people saw on Saturday, he was with the ones at left tackle, and there was some shuffling. Tyler Booker was at left guard. Uh, which means if, if I, you ask my read of the situation, that means they're they're looking to give Caden a little little help over there in, in pass protection is, is what I guess that would be about because uh, that's, that's a little late in fall practice to be making that move. But um, I think they feel really good about where this line is in terms of run blocking, which is what the identity of this offense. And so running the football should be a strength of this team. And, and if it's not, then this offense is in for real trouble this year. Yeah. If they cannot run the ball consistently, if it's not markedly better than it's been the last couple of years, especially in in short yarded situations and off, this offense is in trouble. But I think they feel pretty good about where, where this where this group is run blocking. I think pass protection. Anytime that you have a, a, a true freshman at left tackle or any of your tackle spots, it's going to be a work in progress. But he's an elite talent, and so I would I would sort of read into Tyler Booker playing left guard. I don't know if that's where he's going to line up next Saturday or a couple Saturdays from now, but um, I, that's where he was Saturday. And so I, I tend to read that, that was to give Caden Proctor a little help in pass protection. Yeah, two things off that. One, to, what does that mean for Dahlcourt? Does that find a place for him now? And the other one is when you're talking about helping him, like physically help him block or help him with some of the uh, mental aspects of the game, just having an experienced guy over there and make sure we're all on the same page and what we're doing here. Or both. Yeah, I think, yeah, avoiding miscommun miscommunications, um, you know, changing pass protections on the fly or looking at a defense and, and trying to say, hey, here's here's who you have. You know, this is this is what we're reading. This is who you have. Um, and, and so I think it's more of that. Aaron Suttles is with us at Aaron Suttles on Twitter at yay underscore ALA, yay underscore ALA on Twitter. Uh, also, yay-alabama.com on uh, line if you want to subscribe to Yay Alabama. Aaron's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. 
Uh, I, I know you don't see every practice. No, most people don't see every practice. But a name I consistently hear, if I told you the star of fall camp has been Jim Miller, would I be way off base, you think? No, he's good. In fact, I, I don't know if I told you guys or um, who I told, but it was about a month ago, maybe a little, a little longer, someone asked the question, if you were to handicap who gets the most carries on this team and who has the most yards on this team, who would it be? I, I think Jace McClellan's going to get the most carries. I think Jam Miller's going to lead the team in rushing yards. Wow. I, I think I think he's got a different gear. I think he's explosive. It doesn't take much of a crease. I mean, we saw it last year in limited carries, what he did. I still, I still remember late in the game against Kansas State, he broke off a long run. And he didn't have much of a, a sliver of daylight. He just made something happen. I think he's I, – I, I think – Running back is not a position I worry about with this team. They are deep. Now, it's not totally – they're not totally all experienced, but it's a it's a position group of depth. Uh, and, and like I said, if, if they have issues running the football this year, it won't be because of the running backs. And if they can't run the football, then that spells trouble for this year, I think. Yeah, look, no concern with running backs, but definitely concern with wide receivers. You didn't see the dominant guy. We've Ooh. talked about this a bunch. I think the first teamers on Saturday were Jermaine Burton, Malik Benson, and Isaiah Bond. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are those going to be, would you say one through three right now, those are the guys? I think that's, I think that's where it stands today, yeah. Where is your Corey Brooks? Hadn't had the best fall practice from what I've heard. I didn't, um, Again, I, I'm not out there seeing it, just relying on other people. I just don't think he's been the most consistent. But, heck, none of these guys have been consistent. It's an issue, and it's flat-out embarrassing. It's flat-out embarrassing that this team is stacked with four-star wide receivers that can't catch the football. And I, I think Nick Saban is trying to protect them a little bit in some of his answers because he's trying to build some confidence. But as I said when I talked to you guys last time, somebody's got to step up. Now, I don't think it's helped the group that they're playing with so many different quarterbacks and the timing is just not there yet, working with one guy. But there's enough talent that this this many drops for the second year in a row should not be happening. And it doesn't mean it's going to continue. But I, I could tell you, I heard, uh, I heard from somebody that was there Saturday and – they weren't actually, you know, they were sort of smoozing the people in the crowd and they weren't watching. So they were in the zone and, and they, so they weren't, they had their back turned to the action and all they heard were groans from the crowd and they knew exactly what it was. It was another drop pass. Yeah. So it's an issue and, and somebody has got to step up on that group. And I, and I, I don't want to be too hard on them because they hadn't played a game yet and they may solve these issues on their own. And like I said, I do think, the timing playing with so many different quarterbacks is not helping them. Um, but the quarterback hadn't won that job, so that just is what it is. That's a situation that's going to have to rectify itself naturally. But they got to start catching the football. You know, one thing I got from somebody who was watching texted me and said um, that this team uh, looks a little more physical than the last couple of years, and I think some of that can go to the offensive line. Nobody's going to push this team around was the text I got. Uh, whatever for whatever reason there had become this mindset that Georgia plays the way Alabama used to play and Alabama somehow had morphed into this finesse team and that this team has a little edge to it how how fair of a statement is that I think it starts with the offensive line I think it starts with the defensive line from what I heard the defensive line did a really good job against the run on Saturday which is a, which is a good sign I'm, I'm hearing Tim Keenan kid from there in Birmingham I believe is is really um Really standing out this fall practice. We know what um, we know what um, big Otis is about. We got Justin Avoy. So they got some guys on the defensive line too. I, I think the physicality of this team um, is going to be the, the the hallmark of it on both sides of the football. And and because of that, I think I think they're going to be in a uh, you know I think they're going to be in a lot of competitive games, especially late. Where as I mentioned. The past few years, even though they've been successful as an offense by pretty much any metric because they scored a lot of points, there were certain times, I think it was Texas A&M last year, they couldn't put the game away because they couldn't pick up a first down on, on short. I don't think that will be an issue this year. I really don't. Um, now, that doesn't mean that they're going to have a 100% success rate on those short yardage runs, but in terms of moving people, 
on both sides of the ball. I think on defensive line, they're going to be tough to move. And I think on the offensive line, they're going to be able to move people. Would you, uh, Aaron Suttles is with us from Yale, Alabama. Would you project just based on what you know, Caleb Downs is a starter in that secondary against Middle Tennessee? Yeah, I'd be surprised if he, if he, if he wasn't. No, you know, according to some people that were there, he had a minor injury coming out of Saturday scrimmage. Um, but I, like I said, I think that I wasn't there, so I couldn't tell you if he was or wasn't. But that was sort of the – I read the same reports you guys read and all of that. Um, he's just – he's special. And the one name that I keep hearing him being compared to, and then you guys have talked to me long enough, we don't like putting all these burdensome expectation on freshmen. But there have been certain freshmen that you knew early in their careers at Alabama that were going to be pretty good if they continue to develop and stayed healthy. The one name I keep hearing in, in terms of his mentally, not, I'm not going to say that their games are very similar, but in terms of mentality is Minka Fitzpatrick. Mm. And that's a pretty good comparison. You're, you're, you haven't even played a game in Alabama and people are comparing you to an All-American and, and one of the best safeties in the NFL mentally. That's pretty good. You know, there was a time in Alabama football that you couldn't trust a kicker. Will Reichert <laughs> is having an incredible fall. He seems nearly automatic right now. But wanted to ask you the other side of that. People are talking about James Burnup looks like he has really yeah. improved. He has. You know, the, the, the Aussie went to Outback Steakhouse for the first time a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and so uh, he got to experience the Bloomin' Onion and all the uh, the great eateries there. Now, he, he's, was it really um, his first time at Outback? It really was, yeah. I've talked to him about it. <laughs> so do they have Outbacks so, in Australia? Yeah, oddly enough, I bet they don't. <laughs> I don't think they do. It's always the, it's like the Americanized version, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so no, he, he's been pretty good. I, I think he's more, I think he's more uh, comfortable and that comfortability because they got all, they got all the, he's got the same snapper, you know, he's the holder for Will Riker too. So I, he and, um, and Neil and Hibbett, I think that group that works together in, in field goals and Neil is obviously the snapper to him. Um, I think they just feel comfortable with each other. And I, I think the hang time has been pretty good. It's all timing. So I think special teams is going to be pretty good overall because I think they got some good return guys. They obviously know what Will Riker, Will Riker got married. He's bought a house. Uh, he's a domesticated man. <laughs> so uh, I think the specialists at Alabama are, are pretty, going to be pretty solid. All right, uh, Bama and Bourbon coming up soon. I should have done this off air, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it right here on the show. Somebody stopped me this weekend. They love Bama and Bourbon and ask if you guys would do Widow Jane. I don't know if oh, you I love Widow do Jane. You? Do it's you? out of New York. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Have you had Widow Jane? Yeah, we did it last year. Oh, okay. did you? Yeah. I, well, I need to send them the link. Okay. Well, I need to tell I, them they've already I, done I can't keep up with it. We've I can't done either, so many. obviously. I, it was one of my favorite episodes. I remember that. I, I need to tell this yeah. person then that you did Widow Jane last year. My apologies then. So oh, you're good. Forget that I brought hey, it up. Willing to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Bama and Bourbon starts next week, game week, with Aaron and uh, Lance. Like everything, you'll get it uh, on our Disrupt the Media YouTube channel. Everything we do right there on Disrupt the Media YouTube channel. Uh, Aaron, thank you very much for the time. Have a great week. All right, boys. Take care.